Hello everyone, hope you're having the most wonderful day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. For today's video, we're going to discuss even more of the most memorable restaurants to be featured on Kitchen Nightmares and reveal how they're doing now. So sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get right to the content guys. Mama Maria's For a very memorable season 6 episode, Gordon Ramsay heads over to the failing Mama Maria's in Brooklyn, New York to rescue it from closure. Before the restaurant even existed, the current owner's parents opened a restaurant called Sal's Pizzeria in the 70s and later passed it down to their son John. After years of running the place, John decided to expand into the restaurant next door, which he called Mama Maria's to commemorate his late mother. Though as time went on, the owner became increasingly overwhelmed with the workload which resulted in a decline of quality in business. What's more, John is extremely stubborn when it comes to change and lets his kids run around the restaurant. Worried about the future of his restaurants, the owner calls out to Ramsey and his team for some much needed guidance. Upon his eventual arrival, Ramsey is immediately unimpressed with the restaurant's awning which is all ripped up. Meeting with the general manager Fabio, he expresses that the sign out front was ripped by John himself and that he was currently in the restaurant next door. Finally speaking with the owner, he claims that the only reason they're failing is due to the increased competition. Soon after, Ramsey orders a tortellini di patate which tasted bland, spaghetti and meatballs that were clearly frozen, and pizza that was extremely greasy, he was left feeling disappointed. Smelling something off in the dining area, Ramsey inspects an overwatered plant with stagnant water and when he tries to take it off the shelf, it spills everywhere including on innocent customers. Heading into the kitchen to confront the staff, John expresses that using frozen food is a standard practice at their restaurant since making things fresh takes way too long. Surprisingly, one of the chefs agrees that the food is poor in quality, but John doesn't allow him to change the menu. Later on, Ramsey observes the dinner service which is a complete disaster. Not only is John in a world of his own, but a vegetarian customer finds a meat bone in her tomato sauce and another patron gets so sick that the ambulance had to be called. Confronting the negligent owner after this nightmarish service, he tells him that his awful standards are part of the reason why this happened. Checking the freezers the following day, Ramsey finds tons of frozen pasta, meat, and sauces that aren't dated and covered in mold. Additionally, Ramsey finds out that the restaurant's specials haven't changed since John's parents passed away which prompts him to tell the owner that he needs to let go of the past if he wants to succeed. Once the spoiled food was discarded, the kitchen was deep cleaned and John agreed to step things up which meant that Ramsey would finally be able to move into the renovations. Not only was the menu overhauled, but the exterior received a new sign and the interior was completely modernized, effectively giving Mama Maria's a second chance. Post Kitchen Nightmares, the restaurant sales were reported to have gone up by 10%, which is pretty decent. Keeping most of Ramsey's changes in place, John did decide to re-add a few customer favorites, but the restaurant is still doing well nonetheless. The place is still up and running to this day with mostly positive reviews, with many praising the food, but others complaining about their takeout services. Cafe Hun in an extremely eventful season 5 episode, Gordon Ramsay pays a visit to Cafe Hun in Baltimore, Maryland to bring it back on its feet. Opened by the entitled Denise Whiting in 1992, she decided to not only trademark her business's name, but the word Hun as well, which alienated many of the locals. While many people in the area used to like the place, things only went downhill when she trademarked a popular word just to sell some merchandise. Many have boycotted the business since the word Hun is a cultural icon in Baltimore and was used far before Cafe Hun even existed. Whiting would even go as far as to sue anyone who tried to use the word without her authorization, which is insane. Being hopelessly in debt due to the lack of business, the owner decided to reach out to Ramsey to strategize a comeback. When he finally arrives, the famous chef meets with Whiting, who immediately breaks down when discussing the restaurant's state. Not only are their sales down by 50%, but the owner was forced to sell everything she has to keep it afloat. Regardless of the fact that Denise knows her trademarking caused controversy amongst the locals, she blames the outrage on poor media coverage rather than her own actions. Following this frustrating conversation, Ramsey sits down and orders a big bake club which was stone cold in the middle, fish and chips that were greasy, and meatloaf that was tasteless, leaving him feeling very disappointed. Confronting the kitchen staff about the dreadful dishes he just ate, they seem to accept his criticisms but Whiting seemed furious. Returning the following day to observe the evening service, the restaurant is packed for the first time in a year since many found out that Ramsey was in town. Completely overwhelmed with orders, Whiting became increasingly overbearing and was micromanaging the staff which slowed things down. What's more, the dishes that were sent out ended up coming back for a whole slew of reasons which resulted in Whiting deciding to stop serving turkey. As more and more complaints came in, she refused to serve pot pie, catfish, french fries, and sweet fries, leaving the customers with barely anything to order. According to a server named Amanda, the owner often removes items from the menu when they aren't well received rather than actually fixing the issue. Asking the server to find out the exact amount of food that was wasted during the service, it's well over $800 which is appalling. 
Holding his staff meeting the next day without whiting, Ramsay asked them why they think the restaurant is failing. Most agree that the management is at fault since they're terrible at leading and are incredibly rude which makes it difficult for them to make any criticisms. Later on, the owner joins in on the conversation and bursts into tears when the staff expresses how much they dislike her but she at least apologizes for her behavior and promises to change. Calling a meeting with the locals, Whiting listens through headphones as they call her a bully for trademarking the word hun and express that she's only interested in making money. They point out that they might reconsider returning to the cafe if the owner drops the trademark which was a real eye opener. After revamping the menu, giving the restaurant a beautiful makeover, and giving the owner a chance to redeem herself on a local radio station, Cafe Hun was finally given a second chance. Months after the taping of this episode, the reviews seem to be very mixed on the food and service quality alike, and many continue to bring up the trademarking issue. Rather than stay faithful to Ramsay's changes, Whiting decided to replace a number of the dishes he introduced, which was decently received. Ramsay even came back to revisit and branded her burgers as delicious and commended her for her improvements. Despite the fact that the owner is trying her very best to improve, some of the locals still haven't forgiven her for her past mistakes. The business is still very much alive and has an okay 2.5 stars on Yelp with many praising the food but others complaining about the staff and wait times. Luigi's d'Italia As our final entry, we're going to discuss another restaurant that was featured in the 5th season of the show called Luigi's d'Italia. Opened by Luigi Carizzone in 1981 with the financial help of his father Dominic, the restaurant was met with great success for the first few years. However, once his father retired, Luigi's brother Tony decided to step in and help his sibling out with managing the place. Unfortunately, the brothers often clash since they have differing views, which has only caused issues for the restaurant. Not only do the two often scream at each other in front of the staff and customers, but Luigi's wife Grace even hops into the fray from time to time. Inevitably pushing customers away in the process, the business no longer makes any money and is $1.5 million in debt, which is why they called out to Ramsey for some help. Before heading out to the restaurant, the famous chef checks out their website which is advertising that they have a new 22 year old head chef. Excited, Ramsay rushes to the business but is only met with Luigi who is a 51 year old man and expresses that the post was made in 1981. Already disappointed, the Kitchen Nightmares host sits down to order some food hoping that it will at least improve his mood. Scanning through the ridiculously large 126 item menu, Ramsay decides to order some ravioli which tasted dreadful, mahi mahi that's utterly bland and linguine that's also nasty, they all leave him feeling completely appalled. Heading into the kitchen to ask why the food was so terrible, Luigi gets incredibly offended by Ramsay's criticisms and gets defensive. Fast forward to the end of the episode, Ramsay simplified the menu so the dishes could be easy to make but also very delicious and gave the interior a complete makeover making it seem like an Italian getaway. Following the taping of this episode, the restaurant received tons of positive feedback from the local newspaper and started to rebuild its reputation amongst the locals. Their sales reportedly went up by 40% since Ramsay left and many seem to praise the food in their reviews. If you're interested in visiting the restaurant, you certainly can since it's still open to this day except on Mondays. Well, that'll be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one guys!